how to build and distribute a C++ application with Nix. So here's what this looks like in practice. The big idea is that we can paste sample app CPP into our system packages on NixOS, and then take this package overrides blob, paste it in verbatim, save the file, and then if we run sudo NixOS rebuild switch, let that run. Then when it's done, we can run sample app CPP, and we see hello world. So if you clone the education repo and CD into the 180 directory, then you can CD into sample app CPP. All you have to run is Nix build. Once it completes, you can run dot slash result slash bin slash sample app CPP and see the built executable. That's a local build. If you want to simulate a remote build, you can CD dot dot slash Nix OS and run Nix build there again, then run dot slash result slash bin slash sample app CPP. And that works too. We'll see how this works in one second. So here's the rundown. We're gonna start by creating the simplest possible C++ application. Then we're going to run it in NixOS using hard-coded local paths. Then we'll show how we can test our NixOS config using just a default.nix file. Then we will build and install from GitHub source code using that default.nix as a test bed, which we can then do in NixOS. But an important question, why bother with any of this? Well, this is page key that you are watching right now where we take back tech. So tech is good. It makes our lives easier. Big companies build tech smartphones, things like that, also good. But we don't understand tech, so we depend on those big companies to build the tech for us. Might be bad, because we don't know if they have our best interests in mind always. They might, but you never know. The solution is to learn as much as we can about tech, educate ourselves by building things ourselves, and become independent again. Do that project-based learning, and we'll stand on our own two feet without big tech. Remember when everyone could work on their own car? Well, let's bring that back. We'll take back tech. This is you, you're hosting your own email server, you're tinkering with Python scripts, you're doing your own thing on your home server, your home lab. This guy over here, that's your buddy, he's working with you on this project. You're making a little game together, you're doing your thing, you're sending emails on your own servers. It's awesome, it's gonna be great, so join us. With that said, how do we create this C++ application? Well, the directory tree is very simple. We just have this main CPP source file, get ignored to ignore the built artifacts, and we have default on Nix. So we can walk through each. Main.cpp is as simple a hello world as you can possibly get. It just prints hello world, and that's it. Next, we have our default on Nix where the magic happens, but this is pretty standard for NixOS. We have some metadata about the package here and here, and our native build inputs we need GCC to compile this. Once we're done, we don't need it anymore. So it's just a build input. So for the build phase, we're running G++ and we're outputting to sample app CPP. In the install phase, we're taking that built executable and putting it in out slash bin. So the C app is very simple. Only a few files here. The simplest hello world you can imagine. We have get ignore and then we have default.nix. And if you copy and paste this beginning piece here, CD into sample app CPP, run nix build, and you'll see it works as expected. So we did a local compilation. We can actually already run this in our NixOS config. So if you edit your system-wide configuration.nix, add sample app PPP to your system packages along with Vim and everything else you have. And then we just have to add a package override to tell it what sample app CPP is because that's not a real package in Nix packages. So we just set it to call package and then pass the full path to default.nix and call it as a function. And that's gonna build our package for NixOS. Just make sure you just switch out this part to wherever you clone this education repo repo to, link in the description, then run that fancy command, and maybe you can do this in Home Manager too, I don't know. But of course, the problem with this is you have to have it cloned. It's in your home area, and that's not part of your Nix config, so it's really not reproducible. It's dependent on the state of your file system. We'll fix that soon, but first let's see how this looks when you run it. Okay, in our system config, we're going to take this big blob that we pasted for the demo and simplify it a little bit, slim it down, take this one-liner. So if we run sudo nixos rebuild switch. Let that run. Now that that's complete, you can run sample app CPP and you'll see that it works. So I mentioned default.nix can be a powerful tool as a test bed for NixOS so we don't have to rebuild our whole system. So in the repo, if you clone it down, you'll see NixOS slash default.nix and we have basically the exact same thing we just did for the entire NixOS system all boiled into one file. So we still call the package and we still have sample app CPP as an output. It's just we only build that little piece instead of building the entire system. So if you get it working here, it'll probably work in NixOS system-wide. So try it here first. It's a faster iteration loop, and then you can go big. So if you CD into that NixOS folder, all that it contains is a default.nix. Of course, we have git ignore and all that stuff, but we can just paste in this little snippet from step three here, and all it's doing is the exact same thing we did before. Call package, and then pass a full path to the default.nix. Actually, you don't even need default.nix because it is the default. So if you just pass the directory, it will assume there's a default.nix in there or throw an error. Anyway, run nix build and in the result folder, 
we have sample app CPP works exactly how it would if we built it for the entire system, but it's local to this folder, which is much faster. Another advantage of default.nx as a test bed, you can test to make sure multiple apps work together. So you can see the C app from a few videos ago can be paired with the sample app CPP in the exact same let in block, and you can output both of them as a list, same as, as if you had it installed on NixOS. So let's see what that looks like. If you paste this example in, you'll see sample app C from 176 several videos ago is one package, and then we'll have our second package exactly as we had it defined just now, and we can run Nix build make sure that these packages both work together and that worked you'll see we have two result folders in the first result folder we can run sample app c and the second one we can run our sample app cpp that works too so to make our original default .nix for our application something that we can build remotely from github we need src to be something we can pass into the function defined in default.nix and we also need subder so that we can reach within the github repo we'll see why in one second so here's our application builder yet again you can see there are two new arguments src and subder and where do we use them right here you might be wondering what is the source well that's assigned right here and that's just to avoid a naming conflict between this and this because source is passed in we don't want to get confused there so we just reassign it to a different name and then our src that we pass to make derivation is the combination of those two paths Okay, now we're gonna upgrade our file. As we discussed, our default.nix is gonna support remote loading. So we just added this source and subder, all this stuff, and let's make sure it still works if we run nix build locally. We ran nix build and we can run the executable. That's good. Now that we defined src and subder, we can replace our default.nix builder to have, instead of a hard-coded path on our system, we are going to fetch URL to grab default.nix, it got cut off there, from a remote address from the internet. And then we're going to call that default.nix, call package, default.nix, this is exactly what we just fetched. And then we're going to override that SRC, which we just saw in the other function, with fetch from GitHub, which is used to grab a source bundle from GitHub. And then the subder lets us CD into a subfolder of that tarball of the entire repo that it grabs. You'll see two SHA-56 hashes that we did not fill in yet. You'll see in the demo that we do fill those in. Now we can copy and paste this piece and put it into our little NixOS test bed over here and try the remote build. This is going to be a little interactive. If you run the build for the first time, this blank SHA is gonna cause us an error. So we can copy that SHA that it said that it wanted, paste it in here, because it went and fetched the default.nix and computed the hash. So we can just use that. And if we do it a second time, now it's downloading the source code and the source code also has a hash associated with it. So we'll paste that in there too. Now, if we run nix build a third time, thankfully it succeeds and we can run result bin sample app CPP. There is our remotely built executable that we just created. Finally, bringing it all together, we'll go back into our system config file and we're just going to lift and shift. We're gonna take this whole thing, copy it, paste it in here in place of our old simplified override, exactly like that. And now we can run sudo nixos rebuild switch, let it run. And finally our whole system built and we're back right where we started with sample app CPP on the path built from a remote source. So that's all I had for this video. We created a C++ application, ran it in NixOS using local hard-coded paths. We did some testing with default.nix to make it available remotely. And then we built and installed from the GitHub source, which is pretty reproducible, which is always the goal with Nix. So I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you like taking back tech. We're always rebuilding things from scratch, learning about interesting topics like Nix, self-hosting things, and much more. Thanks.